If you love God, prove it. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. So what does this mean? Let's look up the word exhort. Okay. Exhort, strongly encourage or urge someone to do something. Okay, I exhort you to pray. <laughs> I exhort you to stop fornicating. I exhort you to stop cursing. So strongly encourage or urge someone to do something. Okay. What does supplications mean? Let's look it up. The action of asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly. Okay. I believe that goes with prayer as well. Let's continue. Prayer. A solemn request for help or expression of thanks addressed to God. So I believe, well, I believe when it comes down to praying to God, I believe supplication and prayer goes hand in hand, perhaps. Intercession, which we need to do, or we should do it. The action of intervening on behalf of another. So if I were to intercede for another person in prayer, I am praying on the behalf of another. Okay. So we should be interceding for other people in prayer. Okay. So I exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. So in my own words, I believe this is saying we should be praying for everyone. We should be interceding for, I guess I can say, as many people as possible even for our enemies. Verse 2. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. So, in my own words, I believe this is saying we should be praying for kings and for people in authority. So we should be praying for our president. We should be praying for the people who have power over us. Okay, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life and all godliness and honesty. So if we don't pray for the people in power, I believe this is saying things may get worse for us. For kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life 
in all godliness and honesty. So what this is saying to me, my interpretation, if we don't pray for the people that are in power, as Christians, things may get so bad for us, like... so much persecution. We need to pray for the people in power. Because if we do, from what this is saying, from my interpretation, we can lead a quiet and a peaceful life, pretty much, I guess you can say, praising God, living for God. So if we don't pray for the people in power, we should expect chaos for us. I truly believe this. Well, Kevin, I don't want to pray for Trump because he is this and he is that. Listen, pray for him to get saved if he is not saved. Pray to God that he changes his mind and give him wisdom. Just because you don't like someone as president doesn't mean that you should not pray for them because if we aren't praying for those in power, how much more chaos will come upon us? Think about that. Verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. So, yes, it is okay to pray for yourself, praying for a new car, for restored health, so on and so on. Hey, what good is a new car? What good is a new home if... There is so much persecution upon you. If they are taking you out of your home and beating you up, we should be praying for our government. We should be. I believe that would make more sense than praying mainly on your personal issues. I believe so, right? <laughs> so think about that. Yes, pray for Trump. Yes, pray for all those other people you may not like, whatever. Well, we should be loving everyone. So if you don't like someone, that points out an issue. So let me stop here. God bless you all. Make sure you are showing love to other people. God bless you.